So let's be real, most of you either love Zelda games or you're just a waste of space on this earth. These games are so damn fun, the creators set up a wonderful adventure for you to explore every single time you play it. And maybe it's just enjoying the wide range of dungeons in Ocarina of Time, or sailing the great seas in Wind Waker, or exploring the never ending world of Breath of the Wild. Basically, if you were looking for an adventure, then a Zelda game is there for you. Just like a pimple on a teenager, it will always be there for them. And they have so many good ones out there. Like this one. Oh, what the hell is this one? You're trespassing on my property. You didn't win sh in my yard. Wait, wait, wait. I, all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? The game before you is The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure. The game was released for Nintendo GameCube in March 2004 for Japan and later in June for North America. It joined The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and the Collections Editions for Zelda games on the console, and also Twilight Princess would later join it. It is as most Zelda games are, it's a single player game, but it did have some useless multiplayer features which we'll get into later. The game revolves around the Four Swords in which Link and three clones travel around the land of Hyrule saving the maidens, defeating Vaadi only to have Ganon show up and you have to defeat him at the end of the game because that's just how Zelda games work. Ganon's like that creepy guy in the club. He just always happens to get in there somehow. No one really knows how. And if you guys have seen the Santa Claus 2 recently, you'll know that cloning ourselves is rather scary. Think about how it made Tim Allen even creepier. Which that does hold true in this game because there's a very creepy clone of all the Links and Shadow Links just running around making of an ass himself. Oh, and fair warning, if you don't subscribe then I recommend don't check in your closet because you know that Tim Mel Santa Claus clone? Yeah, he's in there right now ready to feast on you. You have been warned. And as mentioned, the primary weapon in this game is the Force Sword. I'll be honest, I do kind of like this sword. It has a neat gimmick to it allowing there to be more Links. It's a little bit of a nice mix up for the Master Sword. The Four Swords have actually had a prominent part in an earlier game too, another Four Swords game that came out for the Game Boy Advanced. But you need a friend to have a copy of that game, you need a link cable between the two games. So let's be real, no one played it. The main issue of that is that we don't have friends in this world. Now when you think of Zelda games, you think of an open world with all the exploration you can possibly imagine, discovering the many hidden gems in this world. This game plays much differently as it's like a Mario where you go between each level. Maybe you're in World 1-1 or World 3-3 or World 6-2 or whatever. It is such a different pace of game that it feels just so unnatural for the Zelda series. In each of the worlds you basically run around collecting force gems and once you hit a magic number you can go to the end of the level and break the body curse or something, I don't know. Oh and with the force gem comes our boy Tingle. That's right, the freak in the green is back and he wants all the force gems, which makes him quite a dick. Collecting these things can be somewhat fun, but it's not as great as the other collectathons that we've had in Zelda games. I mean, think how much these games thrive on collecting and finding all these items in these amazing worlds. But usually mostly as a side quest. When it becomes just the main core part of the game, it does get a little annoying. You also collect items in this game as the game moves along, and you'll find them all about the overworld. But you only get one at a time, and when you pick up the other one, you'll replace it with that. So you can't just start stacking items in this game like you could in previous Zelda games. And I absolutely love finding new tools, equipment, or just the random items you can get in all these great Zelda games. It really does help expand the exploration you can go on. But in the Four Swords Adventure, it's basically like it's cock blocking you. I mean, I guess you can find some heart containers or this other crap that boosts your defense, but you don't really keep it when you go to the next levels, which is kind of a shame. The core gameplay features many enemies to fight and puzzles to solve, so it is kind of like a Zelda game like that. It feels most similar made to the Link to the Past style, and hell, even so, when you just jump into the Game Boy screen, it almost feels like the Link to the Past port to the Game Boy Advance itself. And the levels greatly vary on how much I personally enjoyed them. There were some temples in this game like, and palaces that were pretty fun to explore. And then there's some other levels. I think I can think back to the Chapter 2 ones in Eastern Hyrule. Uh, those things got really damn bland. I, I don't know, there's just a lack of consistency here in the levels. That Usually there's so many bangers in Zelda games. In this game, that's not the case. Oh, and I promised I would talk about this. In this game, you can play with four possible people. That's right, four people can just gather around one GameCube and play this game together. But it's hard enough to find just one friend, and let alone three of them, so I doubt we'll ever make it that far. And if we did, it only gets more challenging. Every single person would need their Game Boy Advances to be able to plug into said GameCube, so that means when they walk off to the screen to the Game Boy screen, it would jump onto that one. 
that's how the trick works. So if anyone actually had the equipment to do this, where everyone had four Game Boy Advances and four cords that can plug into your GameCube, and this game itself, I'd be curious how it went, because I certainly don't believe that's even possible. And for the one person that claims that he did do it, you will be branded a liar and a witch and you'll pay for your crimes. That's correct. A girl answered a math problem. You know what that means. A witch! So now that we've ruled out you can't play multiple players, you basically have to control the four links by yourself. Which I'll be honest is not bad. You can set them in a certain formation as needed to fight the enemies. Could be a line, could be a cross, could be a box. You can also make it so you send each one out on their own adventure too. The controls are honestly are not terrible, you can only have to control four players. But then again, it would be nice if you only had to worry about one, because let's be real, this is pretty much a single player game, the way how everyone played it. Oh, and by the way, they have another mode in this game called Shadow Battle, but you also need more than one person to play this, so no one's ever tried this. And funny enough, when I actually started trying it, the game didn't even load for me, so... I don't know, I just found that a little ironic. Also, the Japanese version of this game, there was a third mode. Uh, it didn't make it a North America version, probably because it wasn't that good of a mode, so it's probably a little relevant. So yeah, there's quite a bit to the Zelda game. A lot of oddball stuff, to be honest. And I just really don't know about this game. There are some parts that are pretty fun, and kind of feels like in small concentrated segments of the game, where it does feel like it's fun to explore it. And sending in your squad of links to go beat the crap out of someone, that can feel pretty fun too. But this game does take away what's so great about many other Zelda games. It's because every single level just feels so disconnected. The amount of innovative puzzles you can possibly solve with all the gear and knowledge you've collected throughout the game, that's just not apparent in the Four Swords Adventure. The restrictions on this game don't allow it to be the Zelda game I think it truly could be. So we gotta go back to the question of the video. What the hell is The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure? Well, I don't know. 